Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I'm really excited about this video because it joins together two of my favorite topics, that's programming and large language models. Now, a little while ago, I did a video about a GPT-4 and I asked in that video, who would like a, uh, an explanation of how you can connect to GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo through Python? Now, the advantage of connecting uh, through Python is that you have complete programmable control over the input and the output. So for example, you can go and fetch something off the internet, you can include that in the input, and then when you get back the output, you can do something with that, display it, store it in a database, store it in a file, whatever you wanna do, all because you can use Python. So in this video, what we're gonna do is gonna create a smart search agent. So let's say we're looking for something about custard pies. Now, rather than just asking GPT-4 about custard pies, we could go onto the web, download some web pages about custard pies, get GPT-4 to summarize those pages, maybe ask GPT-4 its own opinion about custard pies, and then amalgamate, join all that information together in some great uh, executive summary or some longer format if we want. So we're using the web and GPT-4 at the same time under our program control. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so as I said, accessing ChatGPT or GPT uh, models would be better to say from Python by writing a smart web search AI agent. Now, before we get cracking, of course, we're talking about Python. So you're going to need a working Python environment. I'm going to assume that you know what Python is. This is not a Python tutorial. Just a few things. If you're using Linux, then you're gonna have, probably have Python pretty much installed by default. If you're using Windows or Mac OS, do go to this website, python.org slash downloads. On Windows, make sure that you tick add Python to path when you do the installation. And also to install one of the modules that we're gonna mention in a minute, you are gonna need Microsoft C++ build tools installed on Windows. So make sure you go to the Microsoft site, download and install that. Now talking of those prerequisites, you're going to need the following Python modules and they can be installed using pip. Again, this is not a Python tutorial. So if you don't know what this is, then I suggest you just go and read a tutorial about pip and so on. But you need to install requests, OpenAI, Langchain and Beautiful Soup 4. Again, note on Windows, because Langchain needs to do some compiling, make sure that you do the module install using an x86 native tools command prompt, which is what you get when you install those Microsoft build tools. Otherwise, Langchain won't install on Linux. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, once you've got your Python environment set up, once you've got all the right things installed, we can start talking about how you actually use it now to talk to a large language model over at OpenAI. So we're gonna be using Langchain. It's a framework for developing applications powered by language models. Now, the great thing about it is that it's, uh, first of all, it's an easy to use API, as I'll show you in a second, but also it adds a layer of abstraction. So actually you can swap. So when there are other uh, APIs available, you can very easily swap to just using a different API and basically you, your code still works. You don't need to say, oh, I've written this using the Python library that comes with OpenAI. I've written this with using the Python library that I have to use with Claude. Or I've written this with the, for uh, Llama.cpp. You can use the same uh, abstracted uh, higher level uh, API and your code really stays untouched no matter which model you're using. And in fact, I've actually tried the code that I've written here using uh, LM Studio. Uh, and basically the code remains exactly the same except for you know defining the model name here really. So three things is all you need to do in Python to get this working, a shooting course you've done all the right imports uh, stuff uh, at the top of the file, but basically you connect to chat uh, OpenAI, uh, which is the sort of the chat GPT model. You give it the model name, you can optionally give it your API key, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment, or you can have that defined using an environment variable. You then create your prompt, and then you basically say, hey, send this prompt and give me the answer, which will come back in this uh, string here, uh, answer. So three lines of code and you're up and running. So I mentioned the API key to access OpenAPI's GPT model. You need to have 
uh, set up a pay-as-you-go account. You add credit, which is normally a few dollars, and then you are able to use the account and it deducts uh, as you go along. You can't get into debt by just giving it your credit card number and then suddenly you wake up with a thousand dollars of bill. It's a pay-as-you-go setup, which is brilliant. Uh, and you know, if you put $10 on it, it will last you a long time because we're talking about, you know, cents or fractions of a cent to actually use these calls. The key will look something like this, big long string number. Remember your API key is secret, do not share it with others or expose it in any client side code. Actually, funny story, by mistake, I upload the wrong version to GitHub, even though I say to myself, I'm not gonna upload the wrong version to GitHub with my API key in it. I still managed it somehow, and I instantly got an email from uh, from OpenAI uh, saying, your key has been rescinded because we've detected it in public. So uh, just to note, this is a fake key, it's not the real one, but that's what they do look like. Now, as I said, we're creating a search agent, so it's gonna be important to also get things from the internet, to fetch web pages from the internet. We use the Python request library, which is something you saw us install there with PIP earlier on. It's designed to make HTTP, a uh, hypertext protocol uh, request simpler and more human friendly. It abstracts the complexity of working uh, with things like, you know, like cookies and headers and URL encoding, all this kind of stuff um, to, you know, SLS for HTTPS. It does all that stuff. And all you really need to do is, here's an example, you just say response is equal to request.get, then you give it a URL. And then you can response.text if you just want the text part of what uh, comes back from the response, not the headers and so on. So really, really simple to get things off the internet. Now, of course, once you get that text back, it is going to, of course, send you back HTML. There might be some JavaScript in there. There might be some CSS in there. So Beautiful Soup is a library that makes it easy to scrape information from web pages. Beautiful Soup parses anything you give it, and it does the tree traversal stuff for you. If you only want the human readable text inside of a document, you can use the get text method. It returns all the text in a document as a single string, which is just perfect for what we're trying to achieve. So think about it now. We've got the uh, lang chain for accessing uh, the the open AI model. We've got requests for actually fetching things off the internet and we've got beautiful soup for actually making sense of a web page. Use those three together and you've got a very powerful combination. So as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna to need to use a search engine to find the web pages. We then fetch the first page, we fetch the second page, we fetch the third page. You could fetch 10 pages if you want to. Uh, and then you create get ChatGPT to create summaries of each one of those. You then also ask ChatGPT or GPT 4.0 to uh, about the topic, as I said, custard pies earlier on. And then you create a meta and executive summary using the web pages and uh, chat GPT's own information to give you your final result. So that's what we need to do. So using a search engine, well, Brave offers a search engine with an API so you can access it via Python using requests. Replies are in JSON, so they're very easy to parse from a Python point of view. You'll need to sign up for a free API key, which is called an X subscription token, which you include in the header. And once you get back the result, so look here, I've, there's different ways of doing this, but just to make it simple, data is equal to JSON loads response. Response is what you got back, of course, from requests. Then inside of that, there is a web section. Inside of the web section, there's a result section. And then the first URL is result zero URL. Get the URL, and then you can use that to go and fetch the web page. Use results one, results two, uh, and so on. So pretty good way to get the results from the Brave uh, search engine. Then once you've got that, you can then ask request to go and get the web page, URL one, for example. You then use beautiful soup, and you can say, give me the human readable text here. And then here's the important thing, you can then create a prompt, which you then send to uh, the GPT model, summarize this text into a 300 word extractive summary, ignoring all HTML, CNS, and JavaScript. I put that in there just in case anything had leaked through. The summary should be easy to read and engaging. So you can create your own prompt, however you feel best about that. And then notice this plus human readable. So that's the bit that then adds on the actual web page, which is after a kind of a colon and a new line telling uh, the GPT model that this is actually the text we want to do. And then you run that and you get back the summary here in this uh, variable. And if you do this three times, you might have a, you know, you might have a, a list or, or, you know, summary one, summary two, summary three, whatever you want, but you can then collect all these different bits of data together. And also you can add in that fourth one, create a detailed summary about and then terms, this is the terms that you've passed in 
to this program. However, in my example, it's something you type in at the keyboard, so custard pies. So create a detailed summary about custard pies. Again, you run the model and it will just give you back the summaries. Now I've got GPT summary, and maybe I've got summary one, two, and three, whatever. In fact, let's have a look at that. So once you've got the all your data, rewrite the following text as a blog post I've chosen. That seems to be good results. Again, you can do your own bit of prompt engineering here. See how you want to do it. Ignoring all duplicate information, this post should be easy to read and engaging. And then I've got sum one, sum two, sum three. This is summary one, summary two, summary three. And then GPT summary. So it's got these different paragraphs in there. And then finally, I get the meta summary, which comes out of by running this prompt with all that text. The only thing to watch out for if you're using some of the GPT models is the number of tokens, because if you've done a lot of searching on the web and you've got all this text, maybe that prompt will be too long. If you're using GPT-4 Turbo, then uh, it's not, not a problem as far as in my experimentation. Now the full code, as I said, is in my GitHub repository. You go to this URL, have a look at it yourself. It's not very difficult, it's literally just using those things there. You type it in, you connect to the search engine, you get back the list of results, you go and fetch the three pages, you create summaries of them, you add them all together and say, create me a final prompt. Okay, so there you have it, accessing GPT-4, GPT-3.5 Turbo, whatever you wanna use from Python. Love to know what you think about these techniques in the comments below. Have you used Python to access OpenAI's uh, large language models? Please do share your stories below. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.